uh, in our department we are mostly focusing on water treatment so water you know how important it is to our lives uh, but uh, about seven, 97 percent of this water on this earth uh, is contained in oceans which is neither drinkable nor can be used for irrigation due to its high salt contents. The remaining 3% of water in rivers, lakes or glaciers and even in groundwater that is unfortunately being contaminated by industrial and human activities uh, in addition to nature itself due to presence of several minerals in the earth crust which contain highly toxic metals such as arsenic, chromium, cadmium and lead. Uh, due to these factors, uh, clean water is not really accessible to about 1.5 billion people on this earth, which is about one-fifth of total world population. And that is why more than 5 million people die per year due to water-related diseases. So that is why we are focusing on uh, water treatment plants. Uh, currently, the most uh, effective technologies to treat water uh, are based on distillation or reverse osmosis, especially in advanced countries. But these are very expensive. And the water you get ultimately is completely demineralized. So at the end, you need to add certain minerals to improve its quality. But there is certainly a need to develop technologies which are more economical and sustainable so that even common people in this world, they have access to that clean water. In this regard, a few years before, a process was demonstrated at Lehigh University in USA in which they used iron nanoparticles. Nanoparticles have very small size of one to 100 nanometer to actually uh, remove pollutants which could be toxic metals or organic uh, uh, toxic compounds from water simply based on the oxidization of oxidation of iron. We all are well aware of rusting of iron because when iron is exposed to uh, air and water it gets oxidized very quickly and when it oxidized it reduces the compounds which are adsorbed, for example, at its surface. And when you reduce the size of iron particles down to one nanometer, for example, or five nanometer, their surface area increases too much. And due to that increase in surface area, its reactivity increases. So when these pollutants, they come in contact with iron nanoparticles, they are immediately reduced and precipitated which can then be simply removed by mag magnet or simple filtration. Uh, unfortunately, at LAMS, we don't have at the moment the technology by which we can produce that kind of pure iron nanoparticles. But we have established simple uh, technologies using our facilities to prepare highly magnetic iron oxide nanoparticles. And here I, has, I have this sample. So these are iron nanoparticles and they are highly magnetic. So what we have done is we have functionalized these iron nanoparticles with certain polymers and uh, organic molecules which have specific affinity. These are highly magnetic. So they carry on their surface certain uh, polymers or organic molecules which have specific affinity for metals, for example. So the way this magnet is behaving as magnet for these particles, these particles can behave as magnet for pollutants. So they are, they have ability to remove arsenic or chromium or cadmium and even uh, textile dyes or, and other organic pollutants from the wastewater. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so these are highly magnetic. So once you have certain functional groups on these magnetic particles, you can similarly attack the toxic or pollutant uh, like this way. So this work is pioneered 
by my group and Dr. Basit Yamin, he is very young faculty, very active in this research. In addition to this magnetic nanoparticles, we are also working on other materials which have very high surface area. They could be porous carbon, very cheap, porous polymers, uh, and even porous iron nanocomposites. The idea is to have materials which have very high surface area. Uh, and uh, they have certain functionality which can uh, have affinity for those toxic pollutants which you want to remove from the water. So this is kind of what we are doing over here. In addition to this, uh, recently we have found that these metal particles, when you reduce their size, their chemical and physical properties, they change very much. For example, uh, here I have... Uh, These are actually silver nanoparticles, uh, which have less than one nanometer size. So s silver nanoparticles, they are metallic when they have size up to two or three nanometer. And when you reduce their size down to one nanometer, they be start behaving as molecules. And they have very interesting properties there. For example, they become highly colored and they absorb in multiple regions of electromagnetic radiations. These materials we have developed in collaboration with EPFL Switzerland and KAUST, where I will be visiting this summer. So what we are interested in, because they can absorb in multiple regions of electromagnetic radiation, so we can harvest sunlight. And due to harvesting of that sunlight, we can use these as very useful material for solar cells and also for the photo degradation of organic pollutants. In addition to this, we have some other projects in which we are developing technology, nanoparticle-based technologies, to detect pathogens, pathogenic bacteria and pathogenic viruses, for example. In this case, what we are using is different kind of nanoparticles which have different colors. For example, these are gold nanoparticles, red in color. These could also be different depending on their size. And silver particles are usually yellow in color. So what we can do is we can functionalize these nanoparticles with different biomolecules, for example, DNA and proteins, or even other organic molecules which can recognize pathogenic bacteria or viruses. So when these particles find those bacteria or viruses which have affinity for these particles, they change color. And simply by looking at the change in color, we can tell that yes, pathogen bacteria or viruses are there in this water. So on this basis, we are developing different technologies for the detection of pathogenic microorganisms, could be bacteria or viruses. And simultaneously, we are also developing technology in which after detection, they can be immediately killed, for example. So in that case, we have coated these kind of nanoparticles with, for example, lysozyme or other proteases, which can degrade the cell membrane of those bacteria, and they are immediately killed. So that is what we are doing here at chemistry department. Real gold. Yes, this is real gold. And we have reduced, but this gold is not that expensive as which you can, because it is just a microgram of gold. <laughs> we are not testing those kind of uh, for different uh, factors because unfortunately as you know we have limited facilities and for testing we need atomic absorption for example spectrum uh, meter and we don't have that. So what we are doing is for a detection of pathogens only, and this is only the fundamental study currently we are doing it over here. Yeah. To for real applications, yeah.